Okay, so we're going to begin our class today. So we just reviewed our Google Doc, make sure everything is <coughs> up to date. I'm also trying to take some notes here in class. And we're recording now. So we're going to begin our class. Now today, what are the things we're going to do? We're going to do a bunch of things, and we're going to do it all by 4 o'clock. So we just did our Google Doc. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at DIA. Very practical. I'm going to look at your DIA, see what you did for DIA, which is lots of fun. And then we're going to look back at APA and fall asleep for a little while. And then we're going to look at a little bit of your writing. And then we're going to have a new assignment. And then we're going to wrap up uh, our class for the day. Okay. Okay, so let's begin with uh, which one should we begin with? APA, APA or DIA? What should go first, APA or should we look at DIA first? <laughs> okay. All right, let's look at APA first. Because we all love the APA. Right on. That's our favorite. Okay, so I think we made it all the way up to decimals and fractions, which is 3.46 in our APA, right? Wonderful. We're on section 3.50 of the APA, so please jump over to 3.50. Isn't that a weird name? I thought it said matriculation. I know, it looks like it. It looks like a couple other words, doesn't it? Maturation, matriculation. <coughs> Uh, but this word I've never heard before. I'm not even sure it's in the dictionary. Or it might not be in every dictionary. Metricitations. Met metric. Metricitation. Met <laughs> metrication. Metrication. Good one, Dan. Yes. That's metrication. That's, that's how we mark it, right? <laughs> metrication. Okay. So what? <laughs> so what is metrication? Metrication seems like a really Word, word. Okay. Metrication is called metrication because it's like about the metric system. Okay. And the metric system is something we use in Taiwan and China and Japan normally, but in America they don't, and in the UK they kind of do and don't at the same time. So this is not really super, super Im important because you're probably used to most of it. However, it's still useful to go over exactly how to write your measurements, how to write your numbers, right? That's the key point. So converting things or keeping things in the metric system. So let's just quickly take a look over here, step by step again. Remember, I hope you had some coffee before you came into class. And we'll take a quick look at metric, metric, metrication. <laughs> metrication. <laughs> I guess, it, I guess it has to have a special name in, it means, what does metrication mean? Becoming metric? It must mean becoming metric, right? To replace your metric system or to metrify another To metrify something, right? To make it metric. Of course, when I was young, when I was like 12 years old, we had to learn metric in school because America was going to become metric. But they never did. So now in America, everything is measured in two things, both metric and, what do they call it? Imperial. Right, I was just thinking about metrification, where you push out all the non-metric elements. Make it all become metric, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the metric units very quickly. So many of these things you may be familiar with, such as the first example down here some millimeters and uh, what's the next one here measurements are made in non-metric units and converted and rounded to 
SI equivalent. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I see. That's why it's called metrication, right? Because we've got non-metric being metrified. <laughs> Metrica okay? Metrication would be the, the noun. The verb would be metrify, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? This is the adverb, isn't it? Metrication, and the, and the verb would be metrify. I don't know. Metrophy. <laughs> Retro. Bad. <laughs> Something. <laughs> so, so here you can see that there is a, a, a non uh, a non metric measurement feet, and feet's not it's not imperial, is it? It's what we call uh, in America. We call it what do we call it? <laughs> I forget. <laughs> it's imperial if it's a weight, isn't it? And if it's a distance, it's called. I can't believe I forgot that. Well, so in America we use pounds, and in in the UK what do they use? Stone. Stone. Yeah, they use stone. Now, how many pounds in a stone? I thought it was like twelve pounds in a stone or something. Pounds on a stone. <laughs> Some stones are heavier than others, yeah. Okay, well, whatever. So, anyway, the point here is what? The point is, if you're not using metric, you need to at least have a metric conversion. So here we have three feet, which is equal to 0 0.91 meters. And to pay special attention, millimeters is small m, m, and meters is a small m, not a capital M, which would mean something else, right? Okay, so let's look over at the uh, metric style and the units for writing the styles. And here we have our first rule, use lower case when writing out full names of units such as meter, nano, meter, lower case, unless the name appears in capitalized material or at the beginning of a sentence. So if it's just inside your sentence, not at the beginning of the sentence, but inside your sentence, then in that case, you want to keep it always lower case. Please keep that in mind. And here's a number of examples, right? What about plurals? Here we have plurals. So let's look at the example for CM. We have three CM or three CMs. No, not three CMs. There's no such thing as three CMs, right? Only three CM centimeters, okay? And this is why I like the APA manual. I like they give us examples that are wrong, actually. Do not use a period after a symbol except at the end of a sentence. So if you're using CM, it's just CM with no period, right? Everybody got that? Spacing. Never use a space between the prefix and the unit. So again, 3M, three, three uh, CM, never use a space between the prefix and the base unit. For example, kg, kilogram. Use a space between a symbol and the number. Okay, here we go. Where's a good example? 4.5 4. meters. So you have one space before the M. Here we have 12 degrees Celsius, right? The, the degrees C, but 45 degree angle because angle is not the measure is not the measurement right angle is another word right okay let's look at the next table which is a little bit easier to follow get down to our table here quantity so here we go molars ampers meters candela isn't that light oh yeah right in, in a luminosity kilogram kelvin Seconds, radians, radiation, isn't it? Okay, so all of these are good examples of how that works. Uh, you need to follow the convention, for example, Amper, capital A, Kelvin, capital K. In other words, what's the main thing for us to take away from here is that you cannot just make it up yourself, right? You cannot make it up yourself. So I'm gonna make a note of that. Do not make up your abbreviations, nor your <coughs> capital lowercase. I have to take notes because I, the, the teaching department said my video is good, but they need slides too. So I need to do like one more thing. So I'm using the capital M for mega, but I see in 
certain writings that you know M could be used to represent a million. Yeah, I think the million is just a, a writing convention. I don't think it's a scientific measurement, right? So here we're talking about actual uh, measurements. Whereas I think a million is just an abbreviation, right? I'm not even sure about things like, that's a good question, I'm not even sure about things like uh, gigabyte and uh, uh, megabyte. I'm not sure if those are official abbreviations or not. Maybe they are. But here we go with these. So clearly this book, APA, cannot have everything, right? It does have a lot right here, a lot. But if they don't have the measurement you need, then you need to check your area, for example, physics or agriculture or chemistry, and you need to check their official style rule, okay? And that way follow what they say to do. And the number one idea is don't make it up. It's basically what the APA is telling us, don't make it up. Okay, I don't think there's anything special here. With any other questions about any of these, we'll just run over those. Again, the APA is a style guide. When you need it, you take it out. You use the index and you look it up and you say, oh, okay, there you go. A cubic centimeter should be cm squared. Okay, got it. So you can use this as a reference. You don't need to memorize it, but remember, you cannot make it up. Okay, let's look a little bit over at 3.5, 2, 3, and 4. And what do they say on section 3.52? I think they have a little interesting thing they're going to tell us here. They're going to say statistical and mathematical copy. What do you do for statistical and mathematical copy? Well, they, <laughs> I like what they say. They say, guess what? You need to check your field. <laughs> you need to check your area of expertise. APA style for presenting statistical and mathematical copy reflects both standards of content and form agreed on in the field and the requirements in the printing process, right? So you need to check what is the accepted style for that statistical notation. Now, if you're in psychology, it'll, it might be in this book. If you're not in psychology, it might not be in here. Or if you're using a, a symbol that's not here, what do you do? You need to check what is the normal way. Another thing is, if you're sending a paper to a conference or to a journal, they also have their requirements, and their requirements can be different again. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with using a program like LaTeX to write your formulas or words uh, equation editor, right? Those are all different ways to do it, but when you send it to the journal, they may say, no, you cannot do that, you must use another way. And I think we're all familiar, right? Sometimes if you're writing like uh, X squared and you're just using the, the keyboard, it would be X upper hat two, right? Right, you know, what I, you know what I'm saying, right? So it depends on where you're sending it and it depends on what the accepted way is. So please pay attention to that. Again, what's the rule? I guess there's two rules. One is don't make it up yourself. Don't guess, don't think, hmm, it should be because you're probably wrong. And what's another one? Don't Google it. Because if you Google it, you'll find whatever you're looking for. Because everyone has done something wrong at least once on the internet. Probably many, many times, more than once. So don't Google it. OK, um, let's move over a little bit. Same idea here. Statistics and formulas. Just follow the standards. Let's look at 3.57, which is actually something we will be using. I'm sure you'll be using in your papers. And here what we're talking about are statistical tests. Now, how do you report statistical tests? Let's take a look at this. For example, t-test, f-test, chi-squared test. These are probably the most often used. So let's take a look at how we do these. Let's take a look at this example down below. For immediate recognition, the omnibus test of the main effect of sentence format was statistically significant F2177 equal to 4.37, p-value equal to 0 0.03. Okay, let's just quickly look at this one example because this is a good example. 
First of all, F test. So what did we do with the F? F test is capital F and italicized. It's slanted, italicized, okay? <coughs> and then for the uh, 2 comma 177, so we have a total uh, sample size of 177 and two groups, right? So equal to 137. Look at the space, space after comma, space before equal sign, space after equal sign. No space in the period, of course, because that's a decimal place. Also, I want you to pay attention to just before that, the comma location. Look at the comma location. We have two comma there, but before there, statistically significant comma. That's an important one too. So why is there a comma there? Because we're giving extra information here. The, the sentence is blah, 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 was statistically significant. Okay, that's, that's a sentence. Okay, the sentence is over. Anything after this sentence is extra, right? So that would mean it's a clause, and in this case, it's like just a, it doesn't even have any words in it, it's just numbers. So it has a comma, because so it's like a dependent extra clause. So comma, space, F. 2177 equal 4.37 comma. Now why here is there a comma? Because you always put that comma before your P value because you separate the two, right? Your statistical test value is one value, comma, space, then your P value. Again, please pay attention. Before the equal sign, space. After the equal sign, space. And then why is there no zero there? Why is there no zero before the decimal place, right? No zero before the decimal because last week, remember, we looked at that P values, their maximum value cannot be one, so it cannot be, you know, there's no point to have zero, okay? All right, so that's a really great example. Right there sums it up very well. Again, what does that tell us? It tells us, number one, you cannot just make this up yourself and guess. Number two, inside your thesis, you need to be consistent. You need to make sure you are always doing it the same way every time. That is really key. And this thing here, this F value, T value, P value, Microsoft Word or OpenOffice or LibreOffice, that's not going to do this for you. That's not going to help you. You got to do that yourself. So. You need to decide at the beginning, how will you do it, and then do it that way every time. Now, that's APA. Maybe in your department, your style guide is different. Maybe your style guide is no space before equal sign, no space after equal sign. That's possible. That's a style, right? <coughs> if that's your style, you need to follow that style every time. Okay? So that's the key point. Dan? I'm wondering if Microsoft Word, when, when we, uh, when you go insert symbol and you select your symbol, does it sometimes insert that in a different format than the rest of the body of the work? Like you might have times you were open in one, but then it inserts the symbol as some. Like a different style. Yeah, Calibri, Math, blah, blah, blah. We're going to cover, we're going to do exactly those things when we do Word and its style sheets. So, so I think that might be a common problem with us. It's, it's, it's a problem for everyone. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about it today. It's a big topic. But I think my point is actually Microsoft Word has many, many problems. And the biggest problem is it makes you think you're doing things right when actually you're doing things wrong. And that is because Microsoft is a company that needs to sell a product. So they need to make everyone happy. Like today, we're going to look at DIA. And you will say, you may say, oh, I don't need DIA. I'll just draw the picture in Microsoft Word. OK, that is a really bad idea. Because Microsoft Word is not a flow chart that, a program, right? But you can kind of do that. But you will regret that because something will happen and it will get all messed up and then you've got to change it and you've got to change it again you got to change it again you got to change it it doesn't work right 
because that's not what the but they got to sell a product that's what people want so Microsoft Word is easy it makes you think everything is easy like inserting this inserting that but actually Microsoft Word is is going to mess things up for you and we're going to study that in detail especially things like charts figures flow diagrams and special characters do get screwed up so um, I think what, why, what was I saying the number one thing was don't make it up follow your style guide either APA or your department style guide number two don't google it because somebody for sure did it wrong you just copy somebody's wrong way and next is be consistent always do it the same way in your whole thesis that way at least if somebody says in your defense they say hey how come your equal sign has no space before and no space after and you can say because I th I thought that was our style and I did that all the all the way and they can say okay well you need to change that you say okay I'm gonna change every one no problem but the worst thing is somebody says how come here there's a space and you and you go uh because there should be a space and then then later they say oh wait a minute excuse me how come here there's no space and you go oh because i forgot <laughs> and then they say <laughs> right <laughs> and you say professor warden that's so boring a professor would never do that okay yeah. that's what i love to do to students find all your little mistakes i love to do that no, I'm just kidding. I don't love to do that. But that's what, that's what we get paid for, to find your little mistakes, just to cause you a headache. Okay. Let's uh, move on here to a little bit more. And these are things for sure we're going to be using in the future. How about the percent sign? Here's a really good one, something everyone's going to be using, percent sign. Symbol for percent. Use the symbol for percent only when it is preceded by a numeral. Use the word percentage when a number is not given. Okay, so what are these examples? Found that 18% of the rats. So here the number 18. So we use the symbol percent. On the other hand, if you use the word determine the percentage of rats right here determine the percentage of rats here we use the word percentage all right now if you were to write the word for example if you were to write five f i v e then in that case you would also write the word percentage right p e r c e n t a g e because I wrote the word five, not the numeral. There is an exception in table headings and figure legends. Use the simple percent to conserve space. Because when you make your table, right, if you have something like 1%, 3%, and then up top you say percent, P-E-R-C-E-N-T, it becomes very big and the table becomes too wide. So you can use percent sign or symbol inside your tables up at the top at the top row. We're going to look at tables a little bit more later. Okay, standard boldface and italic type. Now, when do we use these different things? Okay, the easy answer is only when you have to because you know you have to, right? <laughs> don't use bold, don't use um, italics unless you know for sure that that is what you should use, okay? For example, if you're using something like here, this has a V, which is vector, right? Or some other special symbol. If these symbols have to use that, then you use it. If you don't have to use it, then don't use it. You cannot use it because you think, oh, this word's important, so I'm going to make it bold. And this word is, is interesting, so I'm going to make it italics. No, 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 you don't do that at all. All right, get away from that. Okay, on the next page on 3.9, we have some abbreviations, which I think some you'll be familiar with and some you will not be familiar with. That's okay. Again, you do not need to memorize things. You just use the book as a reference. When you need it, you come back and use it. i just give you a little example here. We have things like, uh, look down at, page 142 we've got P and P and PR and Q so P 
can be probability when written as an italics in the small p, and p as a capital P can be percentage or percentile, right? There's many different things. Please reference your information correctly, don't make it up. Now some of these we're very familiar with, r squared r, sd, se, ss, everybody should know these, right? Look at the T. How about the T? Small T. What does a small T mean? T test. T -test, T -test. right? Small T. And it's not just a regular T. It's an italics T, right? Slanted T. Italics T, we call it. So that's a T test, right? And this is so easy to forget. I mean, you know, it's just easy to forget. Every time I'm writing the paper, I say T test. Oh, wait a minute. Is that a is that an italics T or a, a, a straight T? I always forget. Okay, on the next page we have a last few that probably you've seen some of them, like delta and lambda. And what else do you probably know? You probably know the tau and the chi-squared, right? Chi-squared is very common. Look at the chi-squared. Almost everybody's used chi-squared, right? So chi-squared is the special chi symbol. Again, a Dan's question is relevant because how do you do that? You need to use a special symbol inside of word. It gets a little bit tricky sometimes. Okay, on the next page we have equations, and for equations, of course, in Word you can use your equation editor. In Libra and OpenOffice, we also have an equation editor, which will help you make the equation. What's another way you can do that? You can, you can use another program that can write your equation, then you can create a graphic, like a PNG or a JPG and then you would embed that, paste it into your document. That's another way to make it more consistent or mm, not changeable. Remember, when you write your thesis, your thesis is not, the goal of your thesis is to have a finished document that is complete, not to have a document that is uh, editable or changeable. Does that make some sense? So, so when we use DIA today, the goal is to create a really clear and nice diagram in DIA because DIA makes it easy for me to do that and makes it really nice. Then to take that and put it into my thesis. But inside my thesis, I don't want it to change. I don't want it to get, I don't want the boxes to move. I don't want the lines to change. I want it to stay that way. If I want to change it, what do I do? I go back to DIA, and I can change it, and then put it in again. And you say, oh, Professor Warden, that's so much trouble. And my answer is, there's no better way. There is no better way. Say, oh, well, Microsoft Word can do something. And my answer is, you will regret that. That will not make you happy in the end. Okay, so we use each program for what it's good at. Word is really good at something we're going to study later called style sheets. Everything else Word is not good at. Dia is really good at diagrams. There's another program maybe you have that's good at making formulas. Okay, great. Make your formula, export it, or screen capture, and you can put it into your LibreOffice or your Microsoft Word. Okay, now we're going to move on a little bit here to tables. Tables is a big topic, isn't it? Okay, well, I love this because I just think APA is so helpful in the way they do things. I know it's, I know it's overwhelming sometimes. It's a little bit daunting. But let's take a look at this. I just think this is so great. So if we look over at the first table example, it's called table example one, right? Let's take a look at table example one. In table example one, we have a lot of things here that are really, really useful. Let's take a look. They have the number of the table, it's called table X, right? The label for the table, right? At the top, they have error rates of older and younger groups. So this is the label for the table. Then they have a horizontal line. Next, they have level of difficulty, and then they have some horizontal lines there, right? Mean error rate on top, and then younger, older on the bottom. Why is that? 
because this is younger, older, our two groups, right? And then they've got another younger, older. And then they got another younger, older. So what do we have here? We have three groups of two groups, right? Actually, what are we looking at? We're looking at younger, older, younger, older, younger, older, but three different pieces of information, right? Younger, older first is the mean error rate. And then younger, older, standard deviation. And then younger, older, sample size. Now, here is a really great example because this is the way APA encourages us to create our information. Now, there's two ideas here. One is your tables are really a great, great way to convey your information easily and clearly to the reader so he can quickly see everything, right? So if we look at this, wow, this table's got a lot. It's got two groups, three different measures, and it's low, moderate, and high, which means what? What does low, moderate, and high mean? What, what is that? Is that the mean error rate, or is that the sample size, or is that the standard deviation? What is low, moderate, high? Error rates. Low, low errors, moderate errors, high errors. How did we do that? Well, because uh, what is error rate? Error rate would be something like what? One error, two errors, three errors, four errors, five errors, six errors, seven errors, right? Right? So uh, this is what we call what? This is a scale, right? One to two to three to four to five to six. This is equal, right? One to two is the same as two to three, as three to four, as five to blah, 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 right? But the problem is because this scale is continuous, keeps going, how can I show you the information? Because I'd have to show you one person, one person, one person, one person. Where I'd have to say, how many people got two errors? How many people got three errors? Sometimes if you run your statistical program, that's what you get. You get how many people got one? How many people got two? How many people got three? Blah, 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 so many. It is not very helpful. So what did we do? We formed them into groups. We just made it up. We said, well, low is how many to how many. M moderate is how much to how much. And then high is how many errors to how many, how many errors, right? So we broke it into three groups. So, <laughs> wow, look at this. We have three groups of errors, two sample groups, three measures, right? I think when you read your research papers with your professor in your class, you see this often. You, in textbooks, you don't see this very much. Textbooks don't do this, but papers do this. Research papers always do this. Why? Because it gets all the information in one place. So when you're looking at the paper, you quickly see right there. So that's number one idea. Make it easy to quickly see the big information quickly. Boom. Number two, though, is that the information in the table should also be information that's inside of your text when you write. So you should not have a table, but inside the text, inside your paper, you never say anything about the table. But you don't repeat things about the table. So you would not say, in this table, you can see low, moderate, high, mean, standard deviation sample, and younger, older. You don't say that. But you do say something like, we broke the error groups into three, low, moderate, high. And we include the measures of mean error, standard deviation, sample size for two groups, younger, older, C table X. See what I'm saying? So you explain the table, but short. You follow me? Then inside your thesis, when you write, you will say what is important. You will say, from table X, we can see the standard deviation of the younger group in the low error rate is lower than the older group. 
right? Okay, so you want to get a table that's easy to understand and you want to have it inside your thesis a little bit, but not a lot. Let's look at the next page and here is a really great example of why I like the APA style guide. Right there, they lay it out for you. Isn't that wonderful? Right there. Boom, here's what you do. Here's how it works. You have your, what are these called? You have your things like your column spanner. Girls, boys, that's two groups, right? These two groups, girls, girls were broken into three subgroups. Boys were broken into three subgroups, right? So with, without, and different, that grade, with grade, without grade, different grade, that's called the subheading. And up at the top, it's called the column spanner. And together, what do we call this? Decked heads. Top deck, lower deck. <laughs> there can be a top deck, middle deck, lower deck, right? You can have a, a group, a subgroup, a sub subgroup. You, know, you can have a lot, right? And then up at the top, each heading is called a column heading. So width is a column heading. Without is a column heading. Difference is a column heading. Girls is a column heading too, but it's a column spanner because it, it's three columns together for girls, three columns together for boys. Then you have another column spanner down here. Why is it a column spanner? Because verbal tests are multiple columns together is one measure, one item. And then you have their scores. And then this table is even more complicated because it has verbal score and mathematical score. Whoa, this is a complex table. If you can understand this table, if you can study this table, later when you write your thesis, you need to think this way, it'll be very helpful. How can I get more information into one table? So let's look at this together for a little while, then we'll take a break. So let's be patient and look for a second. What do we have here? We got girls and boys. So we split the sample on gender. Also we have with, without, and difference. Right? With, without, and difference. So now we have three sub subdivisions of girls and three subdivisions of boys. Then we gave them some questions or some tasks to do. What kind of tasks did they do? Two tasks. One was verbal, one was mathematical. And what did we do? We just put the verbal and then underneath verbal we put the math because it's the same thing. It's the girls had three different groups of verbal, three different groups of mathematical. The boys had three different groups of verbal, three different groups of mathematical. At the bottom of verbal, you can see we have the note. I gotta wear my glasses to see this note, N-A. And at the bottom of mathematical, we also have N-A, right? And what does N-A stand for? N-A means A is number of children out of 20 in each group who completed all tests, right? So N is number and then N is number and then A is the, A is the special note. We also have a B note. Where does the B go? The B is in the mathematical table. Does everybody see B? Mathematical table 216. What's the B note? One girl in this group gave only two correct responses. Okay, so what's the N? What's the small N mean? Small N means, what does, what does small N mean? Means the subgroup number, uh, sample size, the size of the group. What's the capital N mean? Capital N means total sample. 
size, number of total sample, right? Small n means the subsample. So the subsample is for mathematical 20, 17, 19, and 18, right? And for the verbal test, the subsample is 18, 19, 19, 20, right? Now, why, tell me why, <laughs> are you confused yet? Is everybody confused? Everybody okay? Oh, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Why is there for verbal test? Look at the verbal test stub. The verbal test stub. The section of verbal test. Right. We have girls with, girls without, boys with, boys without. Why is there no N for difference? because the test group was with, without. Difference means the difference between with and without, right? So actually these groups are not, it looks to me like these groups are not, sam these are not subsample test groups. These are statistical groups based on responses, right? So some girls had with and some girls had without. Some boys had with, some boys had without. What was the difference between girls with and without? That's in the difference column. What's the difference between boys with and without? That's in the difference column also. Now in this case, let, so we'll go, I'll answer Dan's question. This is, we have two separate groups. One group of children we give them some special training that's called with another group of children no special training that's called without right and then this is like a a post test this is just a post test no pretest <laughs> right exactly now now this table if you were making this table if you were my student you were making this table I would tell you that this table is missing something. This table is missing the pretest. This is only the post test. So this table can become even more complicated. Right? How would you make it more complicated? What would you do? I tell you what I would do. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think I know what I would do. I would take girls and then I would say pre-test post-test mm -hmm. right and then I would have pre-test scores and then post-test scores mm -hmm. and then so it would be girls pre post with without with without mm -hmm. and then we should see we should see that girls pre-test with without should be the same because they began the same then I would add a T value here so in one table you can get a lot of information right because I would want to I want to know the girls pretest right with without were they the same score how do you know you have to do a T test so it would be girls pretest with without T test post test with without t test <laughs> right but what many students do what many students do is is what they just take their spss answer cut it and paste it <laughs> but that is not helpful because that does not tell us the information we need so a table should not be just one test information it should be a whole it should be your whole research design is here so you should be able to have one table with your whole research design now this table is results so in here we can see this design this was a post test with two groups no pretest 
Now, what about the sample? What about how old were they? How, uh, you know, all of this. That can be another table. You can have a table about age. You can have a table about, but then you need to have one table. You need to have one table that is like your answer. And it's, it just shows everything in one table about your design. So here we can see the whole research design. Boom, there you go. It was a post-test with two groups, with training, and then we had two tests we gave them. Okay, now this table, they've made it a little bit simple because it has no statistical results, right? So that's not realistic. This is, uh, I mean, there'd be no reason. If I saw this table, I would say, why you show me this information without the statistical result? Because I want to see, you know, with 280, without 240, so what? <laughs> right? So? It, it, that doesn't tell me anything. That just tells me that, you know, one is higher than the other, but that doesn't mean anything. So I need a t at least a t-test here. Then I would argue, I would say, well, how do you know that the group was not different to begin with before your training. So we really need to have a pretest. Anyway, the point of this is just to show you the design of the table. And I really like APA's approach. Let's look at some more examples. So on the next page we have table example three. In table example three, what we've done is we have the label mean causality and responsibility attribution scores. So we have uh, personality similarity, so high, low, high, low. And then we have situational similarity, low, high. Then we have causality responsibility because we're measuring two things, remember? We're measuring the mean causality and responsibility. So we're measuring causality and and responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Causality and responsibility. And we have low high. Again, how did we make how did we make low high? We made it by just dividing up the group somehow, right? Maybe some cutoff point. And then personality similarity. How did we make low high? Again, some measure and we just cut off, say here is high, here is low, okay? And then here we have our numbers here. Now, what is this? This is mean causality and responsibility attribution score. So it's a mean score. So in the group of low situational similarity and in the group of persona personal <laughs> Pers personal similarity we have in the causality score a mean of 16 not 16 people a mean of 16 that's what that's telling us a mean of 16 confused situational similarity how did we get this number situation similarity how do we get this we must have some measure in the survey or in somehow we measure them. Mm -hmm. So this is an example of how one survey or one, one, you give them one questionnaire or one survey has different parts. Those different parts are measuring different things. For example, situation similarity, personal similarity, and then this, causality responsibility. So in there you're measuring different things. And so in your survey, you have different sections. Each one of those sections is different. And those different sections probably need something like a reliability test, like a, 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 a factor analysis. And that's why we do that factor analysis, because you need to show my scores here are different than those scores there. That's the whole point, right? And so when you give your survey, or, or when you make your test survey, is the best time when you make your your uh, uh, pretest. Well, we, not pretest. I mean, you know, pre-survey test. You're, you're, when you're making your survey and you need a small group, you need to try to use your factor analysis so that you can show this, these numbers here for situational similarity. They 
have a, 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 a variance that is here. And these questions here have a variance that is here. And these are different. And my questions, those people answer different. <coughs> right? Because remember, the key point is, if when, when, you, when you ask people questions and they answer your survey, what are they telling you? Well, actually, they're telling you nothing. They're just taking a pen and they're making a little mark on a piece of paper. So when you're measuring this with your statistics, the reason you're doing this is you want to show that they're marking the piece of paper actually has some system. It's not random. And there's two problems with random. One, one problem is the respondent and one problem is your survey questions. So your survey questions may not actually work. That's the key, key point. It may just be wrong. And if it's wrong, then these ver in the, in their variants would maybe be mixed up, right? So this is a beautiful way in APA to show us quickly that they're separate groups and here are the different mean scores. Let's take a look at example four. Wow, example four is another good one, right? What do we got here? Recognition memory of words and non-words as a function of age and viewing condition. <laughs> viewing condition, okay, that means when you're looking at the words and non-words. So we have two things, words, non-words. Where are those in the table? Here, words, non-words, words, non-words. Non so it's like two, two measurements. Okay, your, and these are independent variables, right? Independent variable, independent variable, and then down here will be your actual, what is the number? Recognition, so these are dependent variables. This is recognition. Did you, rec did you see it? Did you know it? And then dim, moderate, bright, dim, moderate, bright. What is this? Viewing condition. So here's the, the room is dark. Here the room is bright. Here the room is moderate. So if you're looking at words and the room is dark and you're an adult, the mean recognition is 91. And if you're a, ch a child and you're in a dark room and you're looking at a word, you recognize the word, the mean is 73 times. Now, what is adult and what is children? Let's look at the note, note A. What does note A say? Adults were 18 to 20 years old. So please take a look. A, the little A, superscript up there, A. No space, adults, capital A were 18 to 21 years old, period, period, space, B. You see, A, B is on the same line. So you can have multiple notes on the same line. B, no space, children, capital C, were 12, 2, 12, 2, no space, 12, 2, 14 years old, period. So those are, those are the special notes here. On the other hand, we have another note here. Look at the other note. Now this is a general note, and look how you write a general note. N-O-T-E period, note. N-O-T period, note. And you use italics, italics, so it's slanted. Note. If someone is 50 years old, okay, it will be, adult is 18 to 21, and the yes. is 12. Maybe in their sample, there's no one who's 15, 16, and 17. <laughs> yeah. Not in this sample. Not here. Right? Not here. I mean, we can talk about that for just for one second. That's a good question, but that's not related to this. Here, this tells us they're not here. Now, why are they not here? Probably the reason they're not here is because the researchers defined 18 to 21 and 12 to 14 because if you define 14, uh, 15, 16, 17, what's the difference between 
9 and 18. What's the difference? That's another problem. That's another mistake people often make. When you run your statistical test, you need to make your parameters very, very clear. Because if your standard deviation or your variance is this, but then you're measuring right up to here, then it's going to go over. So here they purposely measure a part. I don't know why, they must have a reason, but it helps the, it helps the statistical analysis because the variance can go over and over this way and you don't want them to overlap. So that tells us, that's a good question. Right here in the table you can see, boom, nobody's that age. Okay, why? I don't know, you gotta read the paper. <laughs> but you can see it, right? And that's what I like about these very clear tables. Good. So what did we learn from this table? It looks like if you're reading words, adults do better in the dark and in the moderate and in the bright. And if you're reading non-words, uh, oh, children are useless. Just get rid of them. That's, that's, the, that's the conclusion. Anyway, it doesn't matter what it means. It just matters that we know how to make a table. Okay. I know you're getting tired already. I can tell. I can tell you're tired out already. Just a little bit more. Correlation tables. Everybody does correlation tables, right? Correlation tables are normal. Everyone does correlation. So let's take a look at correlation tables in example five, right? So example five, I think everybody's very familiar. These are the intercorrelations and here we have up top, we can just use the numbers. We do not need to include the words because the words are included on the left side. It would repeat and then push the table too big. So we put the words here and then up here we can just use the numbers. And the numbers are a number period space. Okay. Now sometimes if these words are also very long, you may shorten it and then include like an A and a B and a C and you tell what they are down here underneath your table. Okay, so we have our sample size right inside of here, right inside the table. So in correlation analysis, you need to put your sample size here. And then we're going to have the correlation on the top, not on the bottom. And then we just write it out here. And of course, it, we don't have this because it would repeat, right? And we don't have this because these numbers are all, these numbers are one, right? Okay, cool. That's working out very good. And same here. Now, again, I just emphasize one more time. This is just a simple example, but even the simple example, even the simple example, is a little bit complicated, right? Because it has two parts. One part is students, one part is adults. You know, if my students made this table, they would all make two tables, right? But APA is telling you, no, please try to get things together. If it's the same idea, get it together. So someone can look at it and boom, can see it and it's, everything is right there. That's the best way to do it. Even if your table takes up lots of space, look at this, this takes up almost the whole page, doesn't it? Basically, it's the whole page is taken up by one table. That's okay. That's okay. Example six. Intercorrelations between subscales of students and older adults. How is this different than the other one? This looks the same to me. Is this, oh, they don't have the numbers. Yeah, right. They've just broken it up. Uh, they're, diff they're not correlations. They're intercorrelations between subscales. Okay. Okay, this is different. So this is correlation, but it's not, um, it's not just correlation of one thing, right? It's correlation of different things. So we're going to correlate this measure which is tranquility, goodwill, and elation, and we're going to correlate it with this measure, goodwill, elation, and happiness. And I think that this is a subscale of this. 
So goodwill, I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm just guessing, right? It looks like goodwill has three parts. It can have tranquility, goodwill, and elation. And elation can have tranquility, goodwill, and elation. And happiness can have that. I don't know, something like that. And goodwill, with goodwill, we don't write it because it would be perfectly correlated, right? Students, older adults. Is that right? I don't quite understand that. Subscale. Intercorrelation between subscales and students and older adults. And subscales. Uh, subscales and students and adults. <laughs> <laughs> tranquility is here, but tranquility is not here. Goodwill is here, it's, it is over here. Elation is over here, but happiness is not here. Happiness has all three, right? So happiness is the special case, right? And tranquility is a special case. So tranquility and happiness have all of the numbers. Something like that, <laughs> right? Anyway, if you knew the research, you would probably understand it better than I do. So that's a good example. Everything getting pushed into a single table. So with zero being anger, five being melancholy, and ten being overjoyed, where do happiness and elation fall? Uh, no, well, we don't know anything about that, of course. We know nothing about that. Okay, now, so far what we've learned is just the, uh, out the design of the table. We've learned the design of the table. But tables have much more fun. But we cannot cover everything in one, one day, right? So we're going to next time look more at tables. And we're going to specifically look at all of the detail of how to put in your statistical test into the table, right? Because that's what I was talking about. That's what we have not seen so far. So next time, we're going to look at the statistics inside the table. But that's next time. So right now, let's take a break. Wow, that was more than an hour. This is uh, David. Is this David, right? David. Okay. Okay, we're a little bit out of order here. So, David, all right. So, David, why don't you go ahead and explain to us about your graphic here, your model? Uh, they try to write well. It's a non simulation and uh, there's no motivation. Okay, so we've got our two boxes here, which are independent variables, I guess, right? Actually, you have two groups of independent variables and then coming together here. Yes. So why don't you uh, do us a little demonstration here and go ahead now and grab this buying intention box and move it over. Just grab the whole box and move it. Okay, so what you've done here is wrong, right? You're supposed to take this line and attach it here. Okay, so I need you to... First of all, just pull the box over. Pull the box over. 
Okay. Now then, grab the line at the end. Grab the arrow. 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 <laughs> okay. Now pull the arrow and attach it right there. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> David's improving. Okay. Now grab the box and move it back over. You don't, I don't think you need to grab it by the edge. You can grab it in the middle, can't you? Okay. Can't you just grab the box in the middle? You don't need to grab the... You don't need, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Don't do that. Just grab it here. <laughs> grab it here. Right here. In here. Inside there. Inside here. Right in here. Right in there. Now, now move it. Now that you're in the text. Okay. Now, just grab it anywhere. Can't you grab it anywhere? Just grab... No. Why are you grabbing the line? <laughs> just, 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 just in, 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 ah, move, uh, no, you're grabbing it, you're doing it, ah, okay, so, <laughs> that's when you add text, you're like double clicking it, right, so, it opens up the box, it opens up the yeah. properties box, can't we just grab it though, we don't have to grab it on the line, do we, X, escape, 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 Move your mouse over. Stop. Hold down and move. Hold down. <laughs> okay? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Circle, you want to give it a try now? See if it works on your machine? Yes. Give it a try. Let's see how that goes. Seems like once it works, it works. You know? <laughs> and when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so now we know we should plug in the computer first, then plug in the TV. Okay, now we've got circles here. Very good. So circles design here has a dependent variable with an independent variable, and then this is a moderating variable, right? Okay. Now. This arrow here should be able to attach to this line here, right? So you click this, attach here, right? And then you can let go. And then if you move it, if you move this box, it'll stay attached here, right? Okay, good. All right, Betty. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Be careful, yeah. Okay, yeah, take, pull, pull, pull. Take more. More, 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 more. Take more. Take more. I have so much cable. <laughs> this can reach all the way down to my office. Okay. All right, this is Betty's, right? Okay, so we've got an uh, interesting model. Two independent variables and two dependent variables. Okay, so what I want you to do is, I, I'm a little bit concerned here. So can you move this box? Move this box over here. Move this box. Yeah, there you go. Just move that. Okay, yeah. So the box is connected. Now, this box is connected on any one of these connecting points, right? You can also connect the arrow to the center, in which case when you move, it'll always stay on the outside, pointing towards the center. Okay? How about if you, can you grab this line? Can you move this whole line? Move it. Yeah, you see, this is not connected. That's, so this is wrong, right? Because this is, this is what you don't want to do. You don't, in our, in our look, the, the, the whole point is, when we're doing our research, we have so much to do, right? We don't want to be worried about a little tiny line, move a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. That's a wasting your time, right? You want to make it in DIA, and then when your professor says, oh, this variable is no good, change this variable. You can just change them, but the lines and everything stay connected no matter what. Everything is connected and moves. Doing that is no good. Right? What is she doing wrong? She's using the wrong line. What line should she be using? She should be using... You should be using that line there and doing it right from the beginning, right? Right? I'm also a little bit worried about these boxes. Are these boxes just like an extra line lying on top? I think they are. What if you move this box? What happens? <laughs> Yeah. 
Move this box for me, Betty. Yo, whoa, whoa, what happened to your line? <laughs> you see, that's what you don't want, right? That is, that is not the right way. Now, now, I'm going to give you a really quick, a really quick uh, 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 instruction on this. So, so, I always find this very interesting because we all have these computers that are so powerful. Your computer is like when I was. You know, 20 years ago, this is like a supercomputer 20 years ago. And yet, what do you do? You make a line, just put it on top. And you put another line on top and you line it up. That is the wrong way. Right? That is the totally wrong way. Because that will waste your time later. Right? <laughs> She's still doing it. <laughs> Betty, stop. <laughs> You're doing it the wrong way. It's wrong. Right? Everything needs to be fit together and then you can change it. No line just like that, just right. That's wrong. Okay? You follow me? Like this one here should be using these lines so that they, they can turn, right? And then this line here has to be attached here so that it always stays together, right? Yeah? Okay. All right. And you've got this strange thing here too. You just kind of lowercase letters here is a little bit strange at the beginning. Okay, let's jump over to Alisa. Okay, wow, that's an interesting model, a little bit different than what we've seen so far. So let's take a look at Alicia's here. And so we have the, a group of variables, and these variables together are your dependent variables called E word of mouth, and then these variables are inside of this group. And then we have our independent variables and two uh, moderating variables. So for the moderating variables, let me see, what if you grab this this moderating variable move it around what happens yes you were attached you see so things stay together so if your professor tells you change it it's easy to change how about this involvement can you move that wow wonderful that's great how about this e word of mouth can you move this box and everything moves with it whoa wonderful <laughs> <laughs> wonderful wonderful now let me ask you a question how did you know to do that you must be an expert at Dia. You must have used Dia before, right? No. So how did you know that? Well, I think you're wrong. I think Dia is way better than PowerPoint and Word. <laughs> but the point is, she used her brain to think about it, right? There must be a reason for this. There must be a use, not just draw a line, draw a line, draw a line, like a, like a, 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 a cartoon program, right? So good. Elisa is 100% there. Good job. Okay, Jenny is next. I should undo this and I should say Z, Z for that one. And then this would be Alicia. Okay, there we go. Good for Dia. Wonderful. Any success? We doing anything? Uh, who's next? Jenny. Jenny, okay. Did you get it? Nothing? Ah, yes. Good. Wonderful. There we go. Okay. So Jenny has three variables, and they're all coming into one dependent variable, brand evaluation. And so why don't you help us and 
move one of those boxes there. Let's see how your lines are connected. Go ahead and grab the box and move it. Oh, oh, mmm, okay. All right, well, that's connected there. That's good. Now you've got to be able to connect these boxes with that line there, right? Can't you just grab that line there? Yeah. Oh, I see. You have a grab. You see, the thing you've made is different. You have a, this is like, this is not what you think it is, right? This is a set, um, preset figure, isn't it? Click on the, click on this three line thingy. Click twice and open up its properties. What did you do to make that? I don't follow. I'm lost. Explain to us how did you make that three line, Jenny? Ah, uh, okay. Right. Okay. Uh, what you've done is wrong. <laughs> okay. This is a special symbol. I think this is electronic, isn't it? Isn't this like an off switch or something? Is anybody here double E major? <laughs> no. But this is a special symbol. And that special symbol is for a flow diagram. But what you did is you put the symbol in here and then you used it for this. What you need to do is have normal lines that can attach and then you can move around so that they don't move. Okay? All right. So let's jump over to Sarah. Okay, we can <laughs> test the Mackie thingy here. Okay, here you go. Just for you. <laughs> I called up Apple Company and they told me $2,000. Oh. I bought it at PC Home $300. <laughs> yeah. So what's the lesson? I don't know. I bought the cheap one. <laughs> Unless you want your teacher to spend three hundred dollars on you. <laughs> well, I'll get by. Okay, that's right. There you go. Please don't tell me it's wrong. I have to go buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to stick it in every <laughs> hole possible. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been using your Mac for how long? There should be a thing called a display port. Display port. Yeah? No? Don't break it. <laughs> okay, well, you go ahead and keep trying to get that in there. It's, it's, it's called a display port adapter, so there should be a display port. Why don't you go online and see how your video comes out, okay? <laughs> It'd be good if you understand your own machine before we c carry on. So let's jump over okay. to Winnie. While Sarah, you check out, go online and see how your video comes out, okay? So now we'll jump over to Winnie. Wonderful, good. Okay, so Winnie, we have a nice little model here. Independent, dependent with a moderating variable, variable, and we've got our lines in here. Why don't you go ahead then and show us, are your lines all connected well? Oh, one, oh look at that. That's really perfect, right? Really great. Now, you know, I don't mean to you know, keep pushing on this, but if I was your professor and you came to me, and you said, hey, this is my objective, this is my motivation, and hey, I got a Gantt chart, and look, here's my model. And I, and, and I would say to you, I'd say, hey, your Gantt chart, that time is not realistic. Your time's all wrong, and your objective doesn't make any sense. 
and your model, <laughs> that doesn't work either. But I'll help you with it. <laughs> right? And I'd say, hey, change this and change that. And you go, no problem. Boom, boom, boom. You move it around, right? That would be awesome. So this is really great to take to your professor and just show him. And he says, that's no good. And you go, no problem. I can move this here. I can move that there. I can do anything, anything like that. Love it. Great. Good job. Okay. So let's move on to Sarah's ready. It's okay. Sarah's ready. She found the display port. <laughs> she's learning about her computer that she's had for five years, something. <laughs> Okay, Sarah. No pressure. No pressure. We're not giving you any pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Oh, something's happening. Oh, the machine's broken. <laughs> I'm going to think this is a number two desktop, so you need to put it together. Because Mac also gives you another desktop. <laughs> Something's happening. Okay, we've got the galaxy here. We're off in the space. Sarah, this is where Sarah lives. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's over here with her Mac. And here's us <laughs> for our PC here. Next. <laughs> 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 wow, okay. <laughs> We're making big progress. <laughs> this you do understand this is your other desktop, right? So you, it's like a second desktop. No. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a second desktop. You just did it. That's right. That's right. Now you need to move to your other desktop. No, 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 no. You know, <laughs> Sarah, no, stop. It's a nice machine. You got to learn how to use it. All right? Four, stop. Take four fingers. Go like that. Take your four fingers. Go like that. Go like that again. Okay, now choose the other desktop. Up top, up top, 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 up top. Oh. This is for sure that's a second that okay yeah. Yeah yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Well we're having fun. We're all learning how to use a Mac. <laughs> Hey, hey, we're making progress, right? <laughs> it's a mystery desktop. <laughs> it doesn't belong to Sarah anymore. This is like Steve Jobs took over her desk job. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me try. <laughs> All right, let's pass on to, uh, let's move on and then we'll come back to you. Walt, let's move on to Walt and Sarah. Uh, for sure, before you leave today, you must get it working. Uh, okay. When class is over, you must stay here and get this working so that you know how, okay? So maybe you should check online to see how to okay. solve your second desktop problem. Okay, Walt. 
There we go. Wonderful. Okay, here we go with Walt. Okay, now. So we got a very simple thing here. Three independent variables all on one dependent variable. So let's move your dependent variable around a little bit. Make sure the boxes are all connected. Grab that and move it a bit. Walt. Okay. Okay, all right. And why don't you move one of your other boxes over here a little bit. Let me see. What happens if you move cost? Yeah, well, your picture's gone now, you see. So what you're doing is, if you cannot connect this to this, you're making your graphic hard to use in the future, right? And number two, why do you have a picture here? Mm, okay, no funnies, don't need it, right? So this leads me to another point. Because in this class, we will not be studying PowerPoint until the second half. But these little pictures and things like this, they are not useful. They're not useful. They waste your time and they, uh, make, your, they make your point unclear. I would suggest also your variables, you begin with capital letters to help them be a little bit clearer rather than lowercase. Okay, what? Good. And now we're going to jump over to David. David. Uh, David, I've already seen yours, right? David was, all, I saw yours already, right? Okay, so now we're going to jump over to Jeff's. Take a look at Jeff's. Okay, good. We're making progress now. Okay, uh, let me see. Your arrows are coming all in differently here, right? Different locations. So are they attached? Can you please move your dependent variable there, Jeff? Okay. Right, so what you've done is you've attached these to the center, right? You see? Jeff's attached his arrows to the center because wherever he moves his box, wherever he moves his box, they're at the center, right? Move it up here. Let's take a look over here. You see? Always going towards the center, okay? All right. Can Microsoft Word do that? <laughs> huh? Can PowerPoint do that? No, I don't think so. All right. Thank you. Okay. Michael. Uh, Mich uh, Mich uh, Michael, yeah. Not Michelle. Sorry. Michael. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, chain reaction. Okay. Yeah, did I mention you shouldn't have drinks in here anyway, and then you're spilling them all over the place? Okay, Michaels is coming through. I think something's happening. Wow. Okay, there we go. So here we go with Michaels. And Michaels has the very simple approach there. How come everybody's model is so simple? A little bit too basic. I wanted you to practice a little bit more than that. Okay, move your dependent variable. Michael, move this, please. Move it. Move it. <laughs> okay, that's called shaking. That's not really good. Okay, all right. Uh, so I would suggest, you know, remember probably your variables have to have capital letter at the beginning. And why is, why is this not center? Why is it down a line? Do you have an empty line inside there? Why is it so, why is your word so below the center? What did you do to make your words be underneath the center? What, how did you do that? Here you, here you did not. Here you did. Here you did not. <laughs> Mm 
<laughs> right? So you need to look into that, right? You need to make sure when you're doing this, everything is consistent. And here you're very, here it's really way down there, right? Here, I guess is one. It's, it's inside an invisible box, inside the box. Is it not part, is it not a label of the box? Is it text attached to the box? Can you click the text? Can you move the text? Is it just that sometimes you can just attach? Yeah, that's why you've attached the text. So what you've done is you're taking text and attaching it to the box. That's one way, not the best way. You should be using the box's label, right? So what made you, what made you put, what made you put words on the box? Why did you do that? Why didn't you use the text control for the box? I, I, I know why you did it because you just thought, hey, I'll put some words on there, so I just grab some words. So what you need to do is you need to look at the help menu or go to the wiki and read a little bit to understand it a little bit, right? Not just make it up off the top of your head because you're going to do things wrong, right? So definitely look into that. Okay. So a little bit of a problem there. So uh, next is Nung. Next. Pass it over. Get the wire over here. And Sarah, whenever you're ready, you tell me. <laughs> Sarah's working hard, studying her Mac. Somebody told me the Mac's so easy to use, you don't need to read the manual. It should be easy, right? <laughs> Too easy. It's so easy, it's hard to understand. Okay, wow, wonderful. Great, perfect. Here we go. Okay. Mung, tell me which... Oh, wow, okay, so yours is a little bit more complicated, right? Can you zoom in and get a bigger picture there? Use the magnifying glass. You can use control and then zoom, right? Or you can use the magnifying glass or... Yeah, there you go. Wonderful. Okay. Right. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Very nice. Okay. So we have a kind of a flow here, right? So total expenditure and then down to three categories and then food at home broken into <coughs> these subcategories, right? Wonderful. Okay. So can you grab one of these and move them? <coughs> and that's attached so no matter what she does it can move around if your professor told you hey put this one here and put this one here what would you do you just pull it over here pull this one over there why don't you do that for me put this one here and put this one here just pull it over just pull it over there you go okay let let go and then move that one over there ah there you <coughs> go that's right that's right <coughs> why don't you do this why don't you line these <coughs> up i want you to make sure okay First, do it. Grab off and pull it down. Great. And uh, <coughs> let, let, okay, over here. That's right. Take this one, pull it down a little bit. Okay, stop. Take this one, pull it up a little bit. Take this one, this one here, move it over a little bit. Okay, what a mess. Right? What a mess. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to select all of these. Select all of them. Okay, well, how are you doing that? Control. Control. You're using your control, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could just drag your arrow here and select it's them all. Also, also right? Okay, there you go. Okay, that, 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 just select all of these, every one. You just... Oh. You just use your arrow. Yeah, 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 there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> You're missing one. So hold down the... Oh, and now it's all gone. <laughs> okay, okay. Got it? Right? Now, I want you to make them all go in one straight line. Everybody pay attention because I want everybody to be able to do this. How can you make these? Nope, that's not how. I want you to make them all in one straight line. Mm -hmm. And I want you to make their spacing equal. Mm -hmm. And your menus are in Vietnamese or in what language? Thai. 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 Oh, okay. So that's going to be good for you, bad for me. <laughs> but I have Dia here too. So everybody go into Dia and we're all going to help Nung. How can she make these, number one, all in a straight line? And number two, equal space between them. Because right now they're a mess. 
How would she change that one by one? No, there's a better way. Send your information over to Nung and help her. Yeah, you're getting, you're making progress. And, uh, one, two, three, four, <laughs> up to, up to, up to. Exactly. Four, four, and down, and down, and down, and down, and down, and down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Right, <laughs> look, you see? The second one. Now you're making yeah. progress. Oh, sorry. Uh, That's okay. Two. Now you just try again. Yeah. Go back try again. again. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the one, two, three, four, five. Five. Ah, it's getting more and more five, abstract. Five, five. Yeah. Try five. Yeah. No. We're making progress. Now, now look, now they're all the same level. Control plus Z. <laughs> control plus Z. <laughs> control plus Z. Okay, try again. Again, again. Again, again. She's, re she's making duplicates. Con she, control Z is undo, undo. Undo, undo. Go back to your beginning. Control Z is undo. No, you cannot Yeah, to main. You want to maybe open up your file again. Now open up your file again. Try again. Let's start over from the beginning. In fact, what we can do is we'll. Nung's giving it a good try. Let's move on to Omar. <coughs> well, somebody else would do this. I want everyone to be thinking about it. How do you line them up? How do you space them equally without doing it manually? Send it over to Omar. <coughs> There's an easy way to do it, right? Okay, wow, Omar's got a complicated model here. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, now Omar's looks a little bit more like a flow chart, right? This program is great for making flow charts, right? That's really what it's for. Now, I notice right away some of your arrows are not attached. So this is a little bit of a problem, right? So if you move this box here, what happens? That's attached good. That's attached good. And this is attached. Where's this going to? Center? That's interesting. Why is there a space here? I like how you did that. Yeah. Move this whole big box. Let me see what happens. Ah, you see this is just a box inside a box, right? So you need to find a way to attach this so that it's all together. So when you move this, they stay together, right? So this needs to be a container inside of, of this one here, right? Otherwise, it's too hard to change, right? The program is not just to make lines, but to help you actually have objects you can move around and manipulate. Okay, so uh, Omar, we can do this. Why don't you scroll down a little bit? Come on down some, because we can't see the bottom down here. Let's come on down a bit. Oh, okay, great. Now, take this box here and move it over to the right a little bit. Okay. Ah, your text is not attached. That's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> right? Okay, that, that's okay. Move it over here. That's okay. Just keep moving. That stop. Okay, now, take this little cir take this circle, move it over to the left a little bit. Just over a little bit. Okay, stop. Now, I want you to select this box, this text, this box, this text, this box, this text. Select all of those. So you would use your control so, shift. Click, shift. 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 shift, shift, click, no, no shift. shift each one, sorry, shift, I need you to select, choose all of these together. Okay, good, you're missing this though. 
That's it, you're missing this. Now you got it. Now, put them in a line. Good, right? Now, why did this not line up? Because it wasn't selected, right? And then this is a little bit too high, but that's because it's not attached to the box. You see, so now you see, if you attach them, it saves you time and trouble because you just align them and they all go together. Okay, good, Omar, good job. Let's move on to Sharon. Okay, Sharon's got a little bit complicated model, a lot of parts, huh? A little bit, what's this look like? Again, this looks like a flow diagram. This program is great for making flow charts, step-by-step -step flow chart, right? Now, what do we want to do? We want to have a flow chart that's easy to change, right? Easy to manipulate and move. So why don't you do me a favor and grab this box here, step two, and see if you can pull it over a little bit. Oh, wow, wonderful. And all your lines are attached, right? Great, really good. And I like the way you split this all down here, but look, don't do anything yet. You see, you see this one's higher than this one. So can you select these two and then line them up? There you go. You've lined them up on the center, right? Perfect, right? Save you that trouble. So that's good. Good job. Okay. Next is ploy. Okay, so he's got colors and everything going here, right? It's wonderful. You've colored the, the uh, canvas, you've colored the background, right? And you've colored your uh, boxes and objects. Okay, that makes it easier for you to follow, right? And again, this looks, this is not a research model, but a kind of a flow chart, right? Everything projects in the flow chart, okay? So let's see how efficient you are so grab this box right here in the middle and move it for me let's see what happens okay so we stay attached right everything stays together that's the way it should be right and here tell me uh, tell me what's the difference between a square box and an angled box is there a difference mm, is this the extension is if the main and there to say this <laughs> Stop. So this is the end. So your your flow chart. This is the end, and this is flowing either direction, right? So they have a meaning. And then why is this one angled here? Because <laughs> it's the main one. Okay. All right. Okay. So you have some rationale for that. You have some sense to that. Okay. Good. Looks good and it's colorful, easy to follow. Good. Okay, Floyd, thank you. Dan, pass that down to Dan. <coughs> okay, Dan's got a nice complicated one here with different sides to it with subdivisions, right? So on uh, dance here we can practice a good one because like right away I can see one issue that we can solve right away. So down here we have one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, sub parts, right? One, two, three, four, five. Now then if we take, if we look here we can see our five, are they lined up? Okay, so take yeah. your mouse, select them all. Yeah, I did. That's ready to go. It's ready to go. And then you're going to use your align, right? And then you're going to align in the middle, isn't it? Middle. 
right? Now actually, in Dan's case, probably he wants to align at the top because he has these symbols here, right? So give that another try and try to align at the top. Okay, yeah, that looks more right. Yeah, and then we also saw in the, can you go to that same menu, which is the objects menu and the group menu. You don't need to group them, but I think, Omar, that's what you would be using, group. Yeah. Group puts them together, right? Okay, Dan, one more thing we see is the spacing's wrong, right? So can we get a change, can we equal out the spacing? Can I do more than one align property? Uh, no, because it, it will take over. It'll be just like one main one. Right now, you're top. Mm -hmm. If you did, one is horizontal, one's vertical, right? Mm -hmm. Now, where's the spacing option? Is it also in a line? Does anybody know where the spacing option yeah. is? A line? A line? Spread out horizontally. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Now, you already have to have, you cannot have them together and spread them, because if you have them too close together, they'll just move them a little bit. Basically, it takes the how far are they this way and then divides it up equal, right? So if it's all together, it won't work, right? And if it's really far apart, it'll just make them far apart, right? So you have to begin and get it just about right. Okay, I like that, right? These are all to the center, and then these are all to the center too. Uh, and the disadvantage of going to the center is you can see the arrow will come down on the side. If you attach it to the top, then it would always be the top. Now, in the center is good for circles because you always want to go into the center. But usually for boxes, you want to attach it to one location. Okay, good. And for diamonds, uh, attach to the center too. Okay, let's move on to Michelle. Wow, complicated model, right? Lots of parts and lots of circles. So again, got all of our circles here, and it looks like you're lined up real well. You're right up there, okay, good. You know, another thing you can do in D is you can help yourself save some trouble by, if you click inside here and then pull down, you should get a guideline, right? Click and pull down, don't you get a guideline? Click. If, you're in, if you go into them in there and pull down, can't you get a guideline? No. Mm, somebody can help me remember how to make a guideline. So you can actually put lines on there. And when you move your objects, they will attach to the line. They'll line up for you. And I forget exactly how to do that. I thought you pull it down from there, but I must be wrong. So guidelines is something everybody can look into, how to do a guideline. OK. So all of your arrows are attached to the center, I can see, right? Can you move your middle one here? You can see how that's working. Perfect, wow. Really convenient, right? You could group these together, group these together, group these together, and then if your professor told you move them, you'd move them all at once, right? Yeah, go ahead and group it and see how that goes. Okay, now that you got they all move together, right? Okay. Now, what happens if you're in a group? Can you click twice inside a group? No, you'll have to. You have to ungroup it, right? Okay. All right, there you go. Okay, great. All right, and when? Okay.
There we go. Wonderful. Okay. So we've got our measurement and then a factor analysis here. Okay. And then our dependent variable. Right. Okay. How about this line in here? Did you attach that or is that just... Oh, nice. So you grouped it. Perfect. So, oh my, that's something you want to look at, right? Perfect. That really... Wow, that makes it so easy, right? So easy to handle. And we come down to the last question today, which is, okay, now I've got my dia chart done. I've got my dia figure. Now what do I do, right? So how can you get it out? Well, you can export it as a graphic. You can export it in many different kinds of graphics, a JPG, a PNG, a EPS, and then you can take it over to your Word document and import it there, exactly. You can experiment with that and see which one works best for you. If you wanted to, you could also just use Windows Screen Capture and just capture that temporarily to use for now, and then later you can make it higher quality or higher resolution, right? Inside, uh, inside Windows, you have a screen capture utility. Does everyone know how to use Windows Screen Capture Utility to capture the screen, right? I don't know why Microsoft doesn't... Well, yeah. you want to show me? Go ahead and show me. Mm -hmm. Wrong. <laughs> oh, you're an eight. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. All right. Windows Screen Capture Tool. We're all learning Windows 8. Okay. Inside uh, Windows, the actual, in Windows 7, the tool is called Snipping Tool. S-N-I-P-P-I-N-G. So inside your Windows menu, see if you can do a, if you can do a, a search inside your menu for snipping. S-N-I-P-P. -P. See if it comes out. It should come out even in your Chinese menus. There it is. There it is. Wen's found it. Now why? Microsoft does not put this in a menu. I don't know. It's hidden. It's an excellent screen capture tool. Very, very convenient. I suggest you, in your Windows 7 menu, type snipping and then, then put it onto your, put it, clip it onto your Windows menu so you can always use it. Everybody know what I mean? The window, you can like move it to stay there. It's super, super useful. And you can wow. capture any part of your screen. Now you can also do that. You can grab it like that. You can grab a square. You can grab a piece of the screen. And then you can even change, you can, you can write on it. You can do things. It's an excellent tool and Windows has had it for a long time but they never show it to you. I don't know why. Windows has lots of really cool stuff like this but you don't know about it. It's very weird. So. Make sure you pull it. I always keep it right inside my Windows 7 menu. I put it in the top. I think you can right click and say pin, keep it there. Super, super useful tool, snipping tool, right? Wonderful. Okay, and if you're using the Mac, they also have a snipping tool, but it's even, it's really complicated. So. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna jump back. Are, you think you wanna give it a try? All right. Who's got the, I think Wen's got the uh, connector over here. Hand it over to uh, Sharon, right? Sarah, I'm sorry, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah with the Mac. I'm gonna change your name to Mac. Oh, okay, we're making some progress. We've got a piece there. Can
Okay, while we're, while we're doing that, I'm going to give you your homework for this week. Actually, it's two weeks because next week we have a holiday, right? Next yeah, week yeah. is uh, Qingming Jie, right? It, if you can keep, you're almost there. You almost got it there. You're almost there. It's almost there. You're making progress. Sarah's going to get a job at Apple soon, so. I think I should cut this out of that video. Someday if she does go get a job at Apple to see this on YouTube and say, you can't work here. All right, there we go. There we go. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Praise the Lord. I won't ask anything more of you. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> now we spent all this time. I feel we have to talk about it. Right? Okay. It's it's the end of class, but we have to talk about this one. This one is important. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, there you go. Wow, wonderful. Okay, okay. <laughs> Everyone gets air a hand. A wonderful job. <laughs> That'll teach you. Don't buy a Mac. Okay. <laughs> so, so, let's do a quick check then. Here we have a uh, mediating, a, a moderating variable, a moderating variable coming down here, right? Now, these are all in boxes. You put this as a word. That's okay. Some, sometimes you can do that. Can you grab this box and move it for me? And we can see how that looks. Oh, you've grouped it. Yeah. Excellent idea. Very good idea. Grouping it, then it's frozen there, okay? Mm -hmm. How about if you move this one over here? What if you move this box? Mm -hmm. And this arrow is attached. Perfect, mm -hmm. right? You see how it floats together? I like that. And what if you move this word? Is that also attached to the mm -hmm. line? No, it's not. <laughs> so that's one thing you want to fix, right? Mm -hmm. You want to have this line attached either to a... If it doesn't attach to the text, you can make it a box. Then you can put the you can have the words in the box, and then you can make the line of the box clear, an empty line, and then it would be attached. You see, it's another way to do that. Okay, wonderful, boy. <laughs> now then, I'm going to give you assignments for our next meeting, which is a couple weeks away, right? So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the next program we're going to look at. So that was um, Dia. Dia is great, but I don't want to spend any more time on Dia. I just wanted you to see Dia. It's a great program. It does one thing, flowcharts. That's all. Nothing more. That's what I like. I like programs that do one thing, right? So please use Dia. I really hate to see my students using Word and making these things, and you'll hate it too because they move and they go here, they go there. It's a mess. The next thing we're going to cover is a software package called Zotero. Zotero. Zotero is uh, spelled Z-O-T-E-R-O. -E Z, oh no, I'm, I'm sorry. Z-O-T-E-R-O. -E I got that backwards, right? Zotero. Z-O-T-E-R-O. Zotero. Yeah? Zotero. I need you to install that. And this program is our most, impro mo most important program we will be using. Now, Zotero previously could only be used with Firefox. However, I think now it can also be used with Chrome, but I would suggest just use it with Firefox. You, it, it is used with two programs. It is used, one, with your browser, Firefox, and two, a word processor, which could be either Microsoft Word or LibreOffice. So when you install it, you need to choose 
you need to read the directions. Are you going to use this with Firefox? And are you going to use this with Word? Or are you going to use this with Firefox? And are you going to use this with LibreOffice? You need to decide and then you need to follow the directions. There's video on their site that tells you what to do. It's very easy to follow. But you need to do it. Not just the night before class. It's going to be too late because you're going to do something wrong. I need you to install it and practice seeing how it works a little bit. <coughs> I don't need you to do anything specific. I don't need you to write a document or do reference. I don't need you to do that. I just need you to look, hey, what are the options? Where did it go? How does it open? Where is it? How do I see it? Okay. Everybody follow? Now, one of the things you need to find out is how to open an account at Zotero. You can actually have an account. And if you have an account, you're going to need like a password and a an username. It doesn't cost any money. It's just so that your information can be there for Zotero. And what does this do? This means that if you put Zotero on this machine, and you collect some references, mm -hmm. and then you put Zotero on another machine and you collect some references, you can get them. Mm -hmm. It's like using Google Docs, something like this. Mm -hmm. Now, there's many other things we can do too. Like we can work together in groups and we can share references. So I need you, everyone, to download it and install it completely, which means installing the program, knowing how to open it, and installing what you need to use in Microsoft Word. Because you may have to download another program to get it inside Microsoft Word. You see? It's a little bit hard to explain. It's hard for me to explain to you, but it works inside your browser. It works inside Firefox. Now, recently, it's a mosquito, right? Please help me kill the mosquito. Yes, thank you. Oh. You see, when you leave, I'm the only person here, so he's going to bite <laughs> me, so I, I need you to kill him. <laughs> okay, so Zotero has two ways to install. One way is inside Firefox, and another way is it's called uh, independent or by itself. I have never used that way. I always use inside Firefox. You can use any way you want, but you need to think about it, all right? Please don't come here in two weeks and say, I don't know what happened. That, that's, I need you to say, I installed the independent one, and when I push this button, it opens. So, okay, good. Uh, I installed the Firefox, and when I open Firefox, press this button, it opens. I, oh, good. See what I mean? I need you to do that. When I'm inside Microsoft Word, this is the button that opens up Zotero. Okay? Follow? So there's definitely two parts. One is the program and the browser or alone, independent by itself, and then the part that goes with your word processor, like Microsoft Word or LibreOffice. Okay? Right? Is there any question about that? So I'm not telling you you need, a, you need to do a specific job, but I do need you to install it, play with it, open it, test it out, and number two, open a, an account at Zotero. You don't have to give your real information. They don't ask for your personal information. It's nothing like that. It's just so, just like Google. You have your information for your references. Next time we come together, we're going to actually practice using the accounts, how we can share references. Then we're going to look at how can we use Zotero connected with our library? And how can we use Zotero connected with Google that connects to our library? Right? So I need you to have that stuff ready to go. I already told you about your writing assignment, 250 words on the research objective. One more time, I need you to rewrite that, right? Okay, begin again, try it again, and focus on the objective. Okay, is there any questions? If there's no questions, I'll let you go, for, go today. We went a little bit over on time, sorry. And thank you for your cooperation. I'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs>